Hi, this is a uh, new flow demonstration based on a model by Yannick, uh, which is a split uh, Y channel going through the ball valve model. So it's a little bit more interesting just having the ball valve on its own. Now what we're going to do is go through and look at the setup aspects first. You'll see the first thing it does is you'll always resolve lightweight components so that it can uh, obtain the references to the faces where we've got boundary conditions, goals, etc. For setting up this model, the best thing to do is really to load the results for the two configurations. What we're going to be doing is actually comparing the uh, offset distance of the Y join from the ball valve uh, to look at the impact that has. So we'll just go to the different configurations. We've got the short pipe, and then a long pipe configuration. And just load the results, and obviously the benefit of that is uh, that we can uh, quickly change models to look at the different results. Other than that, it's pretty uh, straightforward. So let's go through and what I'll do is I'll go through and do the demo and talk about it from a Flowworks, a Flowworks aspect um, and cover the things I'd expect you to, to talk about in the demonstration. Flowworks is a, a simulation tool inside SolidWorks that really enables us to understand and visualize the effects of flow internal or external to structures. We can study things such as fluids, um, thermal effects with heating and cooling in solids as well as in the air, and also some more advanced things such as hypersonics, rotating machinery and so on. What we have here is a, uh, a ball valve system with a Y channel and what we're interested in looking at using flow simulation is the impact of the ball valve and the proximity of this uh, Y channel where we're splitting the flow. Because ideally what we want is we want to have the same flow in both pipes at the end. In flow simulation, all we really do is set up a couple of inlet and outlet conditions. So we have our inlet here where we've capped it and we're specifying a flow of one kilogram per second in. And we're just specifying atmospheric pressure at the outlets. And this one only takes a few minutes to solve. But we're just going to go through and look at some of the results. One of the easiest results to look at is just a section cut, which is a slice through the model where we can look at the different results. In this case, what we're looking at is the velocity at this section through the model. So you can see here, we've also got vector arrows in here showing us the velocity direction as it goes through. So you can see the narrowing due to the valve being open. But one of the things you'll notice is that the results are not symmetric. We're seeing a deflection because of the valve angle and it's actually ending up giving most of the flow going down in one side. And we'll look at that numerically in a little bit, but it's just visually we can already, already see that. We have some other tools. Sorry for that jolt there, I just had to uh, restart SolarWorks, it locked up on me. Anyway, so we can uh, look at the flow going through the system in a, in a matter of streamlines, and obviously you can see there is a much higher percentage of the flow going out to the right uh, exit. Uh, with these flows, we can also animate those as well. Um, so we can quickly see that take effect. And that also gives us an idea, as based on the velocity of those portions of the flow fluid, how long it takes to get out to the different areas. At any time, you can also come in here and change it from being, whether it's a pipe flow, to being lines with arrows. I'll just keep that up there, and we can increase the density. So we can show more arrows, or we can change it to spheres. And you obviously have the velocity defined at the minute. We can also change that at any time and make it uh, pressure as well. Uh, we'll just leave this as lines and arrows. And again, the lines and arrows is a, a nice one to animate as well. usually. Alright, skip that one. Um, in terms of numerical results, we can actually s extract information. So we can select these surfaces. So on the left hand side here, we can just evaluate what the uh, information is. And it's giving us an average mass flow of uh, 0.12 kilograms per second. Remember, we're putting a total of one in. We look at the uh, other outlet on the right, See, we're getting 0.88, so that again reinforces that the bulk of the flow is going out in one direction. So obviously with the short valve, we're not getting a very symmetric flow. 
So let's go to a different configuration. That's another great thing about flow simulation is it's so integrated inside SolidWorks you can take advantage of all the configurations you have set up uh, to do a different geometry evaluations, whatever else you want. Uh, just quickly, if we show just the section plot, again, you can see the uh, same sort of uh, result, but a lot more symmetric looking flow. By having the Y join further away, we see the flow gets a lot more time to uh, mix and become more uniform. Now, still not perfect if we look at uh, the surface parameters. So on the left, we evaluate it. You'll see we're at our 0 0.66, which isn't too bad. And on the right, obviously, we're going to be around 0.34 or something. 0.34, there you go. So it's much better than what it was, but it still needs to go further away if we're going to evaluate that. Uh, so again, it's a, a great, powerful tool for quickly helping us to identify things. And again, with the flow, you can see we get much more even distribution of flow than before. So that's flow simulation. That's one, just one example of how we can apply it and use it in a design environment to evaluate changes. Um, but there's lots of other ways, as I said, there's a lot of thermal aspects we can look at for heating and cooling as well as external aerodynamics and forces and we can take all that into simulation to look at stresses within the structure as well.